All right, hello once again. This is Jeff Scott of Rankin Technical College. And right now I'll be presenting the last two programs that I have done for the Feral Microsoft Visual C Sharp 2015 and Introduction to Object Oriented Programming Text. The text has 14 chapters. I've done lectures on the PowerPoints for all 14 chapters, and I have done code exercises for about the last 10 chapters, something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this first program that's called Array to File, and just so you can see it. So I'm going to run it. I click OK. I get a button that says Done. No biggie. Okay. And if I click Exit, oh, I forgot to put the code in there for the Exit button. So let's put that in right now. Application dot exit. Why is it giving me an error? That might help. Let's double check and make sure that it works. Good. All right. So when I click the button that says OK on it, I get a thing that says done. OK. Then when I click exit, the program stops. But what I want to show you is literally I have output now and that output it is uh, 644 p.m. so that output when I go from and I guess that was array to file is going to be in my array to file folder bin where my executable is debug and there's there are the values values.txt and you'll notice 6.43 p.m. So it just was just created. And if I open this, and let me close, knock down the size because it's way too big. But if I cut it down to about 14, what you'll notice is I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. 25 random numbers between 1 and 100. That said, there is no rhyme or reason to the numbers. They're random. So there's nothing special about them. Again, indeed, they are random. All right. So how did we do that? How did we write them to that file? Let's take a look at that one first. All right. First thing to notice is we have to add, if we're going to be working with input-output, we have to add the using system.io, which as you'd guess, is short for input output. So that has to be in the program, and it is. All right, so now I'm saying I put the whole thing basically into a try catch block, if you notice. Everything's in there. I'm not going to go through the exit because I already did that with you, but the whole thing's in a try catch block. And that's always a good idea to do things like that when you're working with files. So I'm creating a new random object right here. Then in this try block, I'm trying to create a new array that's got 25 integers in it. Okay, right now there are no values in it. Then I declare my stream writer that I call output file. And I say that output file is going to be created and we're going to create it and call it values.txt. Then I come in and go through all, you know, 25 times in here and say for each one of those numbers put in a random number between 1 and 100 and as soon as you put it in write that same number out to the file when you're done close the file and then just give us a little message box that says done okay we can make this a little nicer program successfully completed Message box buttons dot OK. Message box icon dot information. All right, so that'll look a little nicer now than it did previously. OK. Successfully completed and done. All right, I can click exit now. What I want to show you, though, is remember what those 25 numbers were. They're right there. Okay, now we just ran the program again. So inside of here, we've got a new 
we've got new values in here. So I'm going to again change the size so that it equals the other one. I think I had that at 12 point, might have been 14. All right, and let's put these side by side. And you'll notice that over the two runs, I have different values each time. Now, some of them actually could be the same. It's not, it's not an impossibility that that could happen. All right. We could have the same numbers actually in the same locations, but the chances of that are going to really be fairly, fairly remote. Okay, so the idea behind this was that we created an array of 50 random numbers, I'm sorry, 25 random numbers between 1 and 100, and as we put them into an array, we also copied them into a file. All right, now I'm going to grab that file for my next program, which is the opposite. It's file to array, so we can go in the other direction. And I'm going to drop that in here. I have a copy of it right now, but it's got different numbers. So, paste. Okay, replace what's in that file. Yeah. So let's take a look and make sure that indeed it replaced it. Again, 14. Cut this down. Move this down. And what you should see when we look at this is these two, I have the same input now, 27, 88, 6, 17, etc. All right, so I just went over with you, oops, sorry, I just went over with you the first example, all right, which was array to file. So that one I'm going to now save and close. But I'll bring up the second example which is called file to array. So the idea behind this particular example is what we want to do when we run the program and click get values. This list box should then be populated and it should be populated with the 25 numbers that were in here. Okay, so let's move this way over. It's probably going to go off the screen for a minute, but we'll bring it back. So let's run the program. Yep, it's gone and get the values. All right, then let's bring those back. The font size is a little different between them, but you can see when you look at them, indeed it worked. All right, so let's take a quick look at the code to see how that magic happened. Again, everything's inside of a try-catch block. And we come in here, this time I just you know, used a constant just for something different and made an array of that size. Then we're gonna have our index variable and we're setting up, but this time our stream reader is, you know, last time we used a stream writer and it was called output file. This time it's stream reader and it's input file. And we're telling it to open the file, the text file that's called values.txt and then run through it. Okay, and notice too, we even put a little bit of error handling in here. There's a, there's a thing in here that says int.parse read line. Try to make sure they're numbers. Because if for some reason garbage got in there, all right, it would, the program would blow up because it's supposed to be an integer array. So now we're throwing them into the array. Then we close the file because we're done with it. But now what we say is, okay, for each value that's in numbers, put it in the list box. And in both those cases, if there were any errors, all right, if there were any errors, all right, then just display them. And notice also in here, because I've been using application.exit, but you can say this, which means the current form in this case, dot close as well. 
Either one of those will work. Okay? So what I have attempted to do in this these couple of examples that I put in here for this chapter, in other words, the array to file program created an array that had 25 random numbers in it. And as we generated each random number, we took that random number and not only did we populate the array with it, but then we took it and copied that value from that array element to a file. That was the array to file. Then in the other example, the file to array, all right, we created a brand new array. Then we told the system to go out and grab that, that values.txt, which originally was our output file, but now use it as an input file and read the 25 values from it, and after they've been read, then write them out to a list box. Now, with a little bit of massaging, so to speak, this could be made into one program. And maybe I should have done that. I just, I, I didn't think about it until I'd already finished it. Okay? So, that's it. I have now in here, and I counted, I have given you uh, approximately... approximately in here between chapters 2 and 14, about 20 or 25 programs. All right. So the idea behind this again was to go over the PowerPoints with you and also go over these particular programming problems with you. Hopefully you found them educationally inform informative. Thanks.